Prison Break is about two brothers, Lincoln Burroughs, who has been sentenced to death for a crime he did not commit, and his younger brother Michael Schofield, a genius who devises an elaborate plot to assist him in escaping prison by purposefully getting imprisoned. Michael Schofield is imprisoned at Fox River State Penitentiary as part of a complex plot to free his brother, Lincoln Burroughs, who is facing execution for the murder of the vice president's brother, a charge Burroughs disputes. Schofield first irritates CO boss Brad Bellick before meeting his cellmate Fernando Sucre. Schofield coerces John Abruzzi into joining the Prison Industries, PI, by demonstrating that he knows where Fibonacci, the lone witness against Abruzzi, is. Schofield also encounters Charles Westmoreland, who is assumed to be D.B. Cooper, Dr. Sarah Tancredi, who injects him with insulin due to his apparent diabetes, and Benjamin Miles, C-Note, Franklin, who agrees to procure anti-insulin medications for Schofield. Schofield accepts Warden Pope's offer to finish creating a replica of the Taj Mahal. Schofield reunites with Burroughs and discloses that his unique body tattoo serves as the prison's blueprint. Meanwhile, Lincoln's son, L.J. Burroughs, has been imprisoned for drug selling. The Secret Service is shown to be a part of the conspiracy against Lincoln. Veronica Donovan, a lawyer, and Lincoln's ex-girlfriend, believes in his innocence. Sucre is sent to solitary prison for storing illicit materials. Schofield needs an Allen bolt on Bagwell's bench to carry out his scheme. Bagwell refuses to give him the bolt when Schofield declines his sexual advances. Tancredi questions Schofield's diabetes and orders a test. A racial battle breaks out between the black and white convicts. Schofield gets the bolt and uses it to remove his cell's toilet. Bagwell believes Schofield killed the former's masculine love. Franklin administers the medicine to Schofield, who tests positive and has frequent access to the infirmary. Falzone, Abruzzi's accomplice, encourages him to discover Fibonacci. Bellick examines Schofield's cell but discovers nothing. Burroughs informs Donovan that he did not fire the trigger, as depicted on the tape, and that the guy had already died. Donovan locates a witness called Letitia Barris. A lady in Montana receives a report about Donovan's actions from Secret Service agent Paul Kellerman. Sucre's fiancé, Delgado, is dissatisfied because he is unable to phone her from solitary confinement. So she goes out with Sucre's cousin, Hector. Schofield is kidnapped by Abruzzi's men and tortured for Fibonacci. Lincoln promises to make Abruzzi pay, but Schofield reminds him that Abruzzi is needed. Sucre is freed from solitary confinement, and Schofield tests the former's allegiance before exposing his intentions. Sucre passes the exam, but he decides to shift his cell and avoid difficulty because he will be released shortly. Abruzzi understands he needs to befriend Schofield to discover Fibonacci. Bagwell intends to lynch Schofield. Abruzzi tries to reconcile with Schofield by having his men beat up Bagwell, resulting in the latter being sent to solitary. Schofield informs Abruzzi of his idea, and he agrees to help. LJ's probation officer compels him to visit Lincoln, and the father and son reconcile after a lengthy separation. Kellerman and his partner agent Hale kidnap and murder Barris before she can sign her testimonial for Lincoln, which Donovan has drafted. Donovan chooses to leave her fiancé, Sebastian Balfour. Bellick leads Potoshik, a deranged prisoner, into Schofield's cell. Potoshik becomes an issue for Schofield's strategy. Potoshik is captivated by Schofield's tattoo, thinking it represents a root. Abruzzi urges Schofield to take care of Potoshik. When Sucre realizes Hector is making a pass on the former's fiancé, he chooses to join Schofield's plot. However, the latter informs him that he must first get rid of Potoshik. Schofield creates a hole in the hospital with chemicals from Abruzzi and Potoshik's toothpaste. Following Schofield's scenario, the guards apprehend Potoshik and return Sucre. Sucre causes a disturbance in the block to drown out Schofield's noise. Schofield opens a hole beneath his cell's toilet, allowing him to access the halls beyond it. Meanwhile, following Lincoln's hint, Donovan approaches Project Justice for assistance, which is rebuffed. Nonetheless, Nick Savrin from the project chooses to join her inquiry. Kellerman and Hale discover that Schofield and Lincoln are siblings and plan to transfer Schofield to another prison the next day. 
Pope refuses Kellerman and Hale's plea to move Michael out of Fox River. They threaten the Pope with revealing the illegitimate son's past to his wife. Pope briefs Schofield about the relocation. Westmoreland encourages Schofield to file a petition with the court, which will postpone the transfer for weeks regardless of the case's outcome. The operatives instruct Pope to throw away the petition. Meanwhile, Schofield enlists the team's assistance in determining which of the streets outside the prison, English, Fitz, or Percy, will serve as part of the escape route. He convinces the guards that he is attempting to flee, and he notices police cars around English and Percy, but not Fitz. To avoid more difficulties, Pope resolves to have him moved. However, he changes his mind at the last minute and proceeds to inform his wife. Meanwhile, Donovan and Savrin discover that the recording against Lincoln is fabricated, but it is stolen, and she feels he is working against her. Bagwell gets freed from solitary confinement and meets his new cellmate, a prospective rape victim. Falling behind schedule, Schofield manipulates the convicts and guards into beginning a prison lockdown to allow himself more time to dig a tunnel, but this backfires when Bagwell incites a full-fledged riot, leading the prisoners outside the block. Worse, Bagwell and a captive CO uncover the escape plot, and Bagwell threatens to divulge it if he doesn't participate. He also proposes killing the CO to mitigate the risk. Tancredi's life is jeopardized as the sickbay inmates start their uprising. Schofield sees this through the cameras and risks his escape plan to save her before she is raped. Meanwhile, Kellerman and Hale utilize a retired acquaintance to convince Turk, a Fox River convict, to assassinate Lincoln. Turk leads Lincoln into an empty subterranean. Outside the prison, Donovan keeps her distance from Savrin. Nevertheless, he demonstrates his trustworthiness when he discovers that the anonymous call to arrest Lincoln originated from Washington, D.C., although the purported murder occurred in Chicago. Governor Tancredi, Sarah's father, personally comes to the prison with intentions to attack it, which Bellick agrees with but Pope does not. Schofield saves Sarah from the dangerous convicts in the sickbay. After a lengthy struggle and flight, the couple manages to dodge the convicts, with Sarah escaping outside to safety and Schofield returning to his cell. She knows that Schofield couldn't have gotten to the infirmary simply. Sucra and Abruzzi continue to dig, risking blowing a gas pipe, but ultimately burst through the wall. After a lengthy struggle, Lincoln kills Turk, but the former fails to discover who wanted him dead. At the end of the riot, Bagwell murders the CO despite being warned not to, before photographing the latter's daughter. Donovan and Savrin arrive in Washington, D.C., and discover that the call came from a phone booth outside an empty building. They get a phone call from an unknown voice threatening their life. Schofield claims that they need to excavate the guard's chamber for the plan. But the entrance to the room is limited, and Westmoreland is the only inmate permitted. Nevertheless, the latter refuses to participate in Schofield's scheme. Meanwhile, the COs are aggressively seeking the convict who killed someone during the unrest. Bellick questions Westmoreland about the killer, but he chooses to quiet, so Bellick kills his cat for vengeance. Bagwell wants his friend, Trochi, to accept the responsibility, but the latter refuses. However, the former set up the latter, therefore the case is concluded. In retaliation to Bellick's actions, Westmoreland approves Schofield's request and fires the guards' quarters, assigning blame to Bellick. Schofield's crew is asked to fix the room, allowing them the opportunity to dig. They ultimately accept Bagwell into the team. Meanwhile, Donovan and Savrin are the targets of a murder attempt, which kills her neighbor. The two flee when they are thought to be dead. Kellerman and Hale murder LJ's mother and stepfather, then frame him. The vice president is revealed to be the lady to whom Kellerman reports. Bagwell's cellmate begs Schofield for assistance, but the latter refuses since Bagwell is aware of his intentions. The youngster kills himself. David Tweener Apolskis is a new detainee who Bagwell finds annoying. Schofield orders Bagwell to stay away from the youngster. The team's actions make Franklin suspicious. Bellick notifies Abruzzi that Falzone has not paid him this month, and Abruzzi believes that Falzone is attempting to push him out and give Fiorello his job as a result of Abruzzi's inability to locate Fibonacci. 
Abruzzi seeks revenge on Fiorello by gouging out his eye. Bellic assigns the room's repair to Fiorello's crew, jeopardizing the plan. Meanwhile, Tancredi consults Schofield's psychiatrist and discovers that he has minimal latent inhibition, making him both empathetic and smart. Donovan and Saverin seek safety at his father's home in the woods. The wife of Stedman, the vice president's brother, informs them that his commercial partners may have been responsible for his murder. LJ keeps escaping from Kellerman and Hale. He agrees with Donovan and Saverin on Lincoln's counsel. Franklin convinces Fiorello to let him work in the room and discovers the hole. Abruzzi convinces Schofield and Falzone to meet. Schofield tells Falzone how he discovered Fibonacci while under witness protection. He demands money, as well as Abruzzi's return to power. Abruzzi compels Schofield to talk by sharing what he knows about Donovan. With the location identified and Abruzzi's powers proven, Falzone reappoints him as PI's chief, and the former fires Fiorello. Falzone and his men proceed to assassinate Fibonacci, but it is discovered that it was a phony address, and that Schofield and Abruzzi were working together all along. The police capture Falzone and his crew after being notified by an anonymous woman working with Schofield. The crew resumes work in the room and is obliged to involve Franklin because he understands the plan. Meanwhile, Schofield and Tancredi become closer. Vice President Reynolds notifies Kellerman that the company has dispatched its operative, Quinn, to take over their operations. Quinn murders Balfour and uses his IP address to determine Donovan's exact location. Schofield is welcomed by his wife, Nika Volek, who hands him a credit card. Bellick learns Volek is a prostitute and compels her to speak. She explains that Schofield married her for her green card and informs him about the credit card. Schofield discovers that C.O. Geary has taken his watch and instructs Apolskis to retrieve it, which he does. Westmoreland believes his daughter is dying and that he won't be able to visit her before she dies. He reveals to Schofield that he is D.B. Cooper, the money is real, and he wants in, to which Schofield agrees. Schofield creates a recording device with the card and the watch, determining the time duration of the guard shift surrounding the infirmary. While the team finishes digging the hole, Schofield informs Lincoln that there is no time for everyone to pass and that one member must be removed. Meanwhile, Quinn questions Donovan, LJ, and Saverin, who is seriously wounded. They flee after trapping Quinn in a well. Kellerman and Hale come and lock him in the well, rather than rescue him since he is a problem for them. Schofield notifies the team about the additional member, and they intend to expel Bagwell. However, he warns them that his cousin knows the plan outside and will notify the authorities if Bagwell is not involved. Abruzzi's men locate Bagwell's cousin, but the guy and his young kid are slain in the battle. Abruzzi feels bad about what he has done, but he vows to care for Bagwell nonetheless. Bagwell promises to atone for his faults as Abruzzi did. The latter spares the former, allowing him the opportunity to cut the latter's neck. Meanwhile, Lincoln is forced to assault Geary to cover for the team, which leads to his capture by the guards. Delgado informs Sucre that she is pregnant, and when he discovers it, he tells her that he will leave shortly. Bellick forces Apolskis to spy on Schofield to avoid being sent to solitary confinement for stealing from Geary. In the meantime, Saverin is transported to a hospital. Hale feels horrible about his deeds and intends to flee with his family. He phones Donovan and agrees. Donovan encounters Hale, who tells him that Stedman is alive. Before he can offer her anything, Kellerman comes and murders Hale. She flees after seeing the murder. Meanwhile, a helicopter transports Abruzzi outside the prison for better care, and the odd man problem is resolved. The guards beat Lincoln and sent him into solitary confinement. Pope dismisses Schofield's desire to meet with Lincoln. Schofield chooses to call off the plot, but the others want to depart without Lincoln now that everything is set. Franklin phones his brother-in-law, the only member of the family who is aware of his imprisonment, and instructs him to prepare the plan. Schofield manages to deliver Lincoln a medication with instructions on when to take it. The crew purposefully makes a mess in the room, and Bellick forces them to stay and work until nightfall, allowing them the opportunity to go. When the moment comes, Lincoln takes the medication, becomes ill, and is brought to the infirmary. 
The crew then travels to the chamber underneath. However, they discover that the tube Schofield drilled a hole in has been replaced with a reinforced one, destroying the breakout. Before Bagwell can move, the squad hears a guard approaching. They conceal, and as he goes, they return to their cells without raising suspicion. Donovan and Savrin arranged for an appeals court to hear what she witnessed. Schofield learns from Westmoreland that the execution will be postponed for weeks if the electric chair malfunctions, a conversation overheard by Apolskis. Schofield uses a mouse to reduce the power of the chair. In court, Donovan has no evidence for what she witnessed, and the government counsel offers documentation proving that no agents named Kellerman or Hale have ever worked for the Secret Service. Bellick pushes Apolskis to disclose what he knows, and he tells him what he heard, so the latter solves the problem before the execution date arrives. Shocking Schofield, Lincoln has already accepted his likely destiny. He calls LJ and bids farewell to Schofield and Donovan, who had lost the appeal. Lincoln enters the execution chamber. Lincoln is taken aback when he notices a familiar face in the observation room. The judge intervenes and halts the sentencing. Lincoln informs Schofield that the guy he saw is their father. The court claims that he stopped the execution after receiving a document indicating a disparity in coroner's reports and ordered an exhumation with a fresh test. Meanwhile, Schofield is looking for a fresh path out. His goal is to travel to the infirmary via the institution. He obtains a guard uniform from Sucre's cousin, Mancha Sanchez, who works in the laundry. At night, he enters the yard through a hatch, unnoticed by the guards. He arrives at the asylum and finds his way around. Nevertheless, when he returns, a portion of his back is burned. Bellick accuses Sucre of burning Schofield, and Tancredi discovers a CO uniform particle in the charred tissue. The fresh coroner's test shockingly reveals a match. According to the cameras, Lincoln's father delivered the report. It is revealed that he was a company member, and Lincoln was not chosen at random. Schofield knows that the fire has removed an important element of his tattoo. Schofield had a prosperous life three years earlier, while Lincoln was in debt. A guy paid his debts by forcing him to murder Stedman in return for them. Following Lincoln's incarceration, Schofield hated him for misusing his life insurance and ruining his life. Donovan disclosed to Schofield that there was no life insurance when his mother died. Lincoln borrowed the money to let Schofield prosper while keeping the facts secret. Schofield, feeling responsible, organized the breakout. Tancredi underwent recovery to overcome her addiction, and Bellick gave her the position in Fox River. Sucre tried to loot a shop to purchase Delgado a matching ring. Hector alerted the cops, and Sucre was arrested. Franklin was in the army when he saw prisoner mistreatment. He reported the crime but was sacked to avoid the publicity. He had to make money by transporting illicit products and was detained, but he kept this from his family. Bagwell fell in love with a widow with two children. She arrested him when she discovered he was wanted for child rape and murder. He pledged to find her once he got out. Tancredi informs Pope of her findings, and when Schofield refuses to speak, Pope places him in solitary confinement. Schofield becomes psychologically sick. Bellick decides to hire additional professional staff for the space. The crew knows that the hole must be filled quickly. Sucre is chosen for the duty since his cell is the only one that leads to the chamber. He covers the hole and starts racing through the courtyard before being apprehended. Sucre explains his actions using Bagwell's material, yet he still goes to solitary confinement. Apolskis informs Bellick that the crew is plotting something involving the carpet. However, no hole is discovered since it was covered in time by Sucre. Because of the disappointment, Bellick assigns Apolskis to a cell with an aggressive convict named Avocado. Schofield is taken to the institution, where he is discovered to be healthy since this was only a ploy to contact Potoshik, who can assist him with his tattoo. However, Potoshik has no recollection of anything. Meanwhile, Donovan's gang searches Quinn's cell phone for information. Quinn etched the word Kellerman into the well, which LJ discovers. He discovers Kellerman's home and ambushes him alone. The cops arrive and arrest LJ. Schofield prevents Potoshik from taking the drugs, and he begins to recollect and sketch the missing part. Officer Geary agrees to sell Schofield's cell to the highest bidder. 
The crew resolves to acquire the cell before anybody else discovers the breach. Franklin first attempts to obtain money from the black convicts, but Trumpets claims that he is detested because he befriends whites and is subsequently beaten up. The crew begins gambling and earns a large sum of money because of Bagwell's expertise. They give the money to Geary, but he refuses to sell it and, to their surprise, retains it. Sucre informs Sanchez of their plan and promises to incorporate him if he assists them with their difficulty. After finishing the tattoo, Schofield tells Pope that Geary burned him, a claim supported by the team's behavior. Geary gets sacked from prison. Meanwhile, Savrin is approached by a figure who urges him to continue observing Donovan, who now represents LJ as well. Lincoln is permitted a visit to LJ. While being moved, Lincoln's vehicle is ambushed on the road. Lincoln's father, Aldo, comes and rescues him from Kellerman. Aldo informs Lincoln that the company he works for controls the United States government and uses Lincoln as bait to stop him when he disobeys it. The cops and Kellerman arrive at the scene. Lincoln contacts the police to protect himself from Kellerman. Aldo escapes, and Lincoln is returned to Fox River and placed in solitary confinement. Schofield needs the key to the infirmary. Avocado continually rapes Apolskis, and he refuses to steal Schofield's key. Volek stole Tancredi's key. Schofield creates a duplicate and delivers it to the infirmary. Tancredi discovers the truth and replaces the lock, thwarting the scheme. Avocado's penis is amputated by Apolskis, and the latter is certain to get retribution when he returns. Meanwhile, Abruzzi is discovered to have survived the wound and returned, terrifying Bagwell. Nonetheless, the former appears to have made up with the latter and tells Schofield that he will arrange the plane. Abruzzi is also revealed to be the one who instructed Savrin to keep an eye on Donovan. Schofield incorporates Apolskis in the scheme. However, the latter confesses it to Bellick, who discovers the hole in the chamber. Westmoreland tackles Bellick and confines him under the chamber before he can notify the others. However, the former is gravely injured. As a result, Schofield plots his escape for that night. Everyone should modify their body odor to avoid being detected by dogs. He also accepts Apolskis while knowing about his betrayal. Franklin is charged with retrieving detergents from the kitchen when he is accosted by Trumpets, who the former knocks up. Trumpets want to assassinate Franklin. Schofield presumably completes the Taj Mahal model for Pope, who then permits Schofield to see Lincoln alone. Schofield tells Tancredi about his plan, imploring her to leave the door open when she departs for the night, claiming that she knows Lincoln is innocent. Abruzzi instructs Savrin to bring Donovan on time. As Donovan prepares to travel to Montana for a clue, Savrin draws a revolver on her. Meanwhile, the party refuses to nominate Reynolds for president. The model crumbles when Pope attempts to move it. He instantly summons Schofield to the room, where the latter draws a knife on the former. Schofield compels Pope to authorize Lincoln's transfer to the infirmary before locking him in the closet. Tension grows when Trumpets attempts to assassinate Franklin, but the latter successfully conceals. The squad begins its escape from the hole in Schofield's cell. They come and apprehend Bellick before he can warn the others. Schofield wears Bellick's outfit and instructs the others to wear white garments created with detergents. The clothing allows the crew to enter the facility without raising suspicion. They notice Tancredi has left an open door for them. Potoshik had followed the team and forced them to allow him in. Westmoreland dies from his wound after informing Schofield where the money is, which is worth $5 million. A few others also hear it. They utilize the cable to cross the wall one at a time. Sanchez breaks the cable and falls due to his weight. Meanwhile, Savrin releases Donovan, who takes the plane to Montana. Abruzzi's thug murders Savrin and his father. The company chooses to fire Reynolds. Pope is apprehended and let loose, setting off the alarm. The eight escapees, Schofield, Burroughs, Sucre, Abruzzi, Bagwell, Franklin, Apolskis, and Potoshik begin rushing toward a vehicle parked by Abruzzi's men. They abandon Potoshik and escape in the van. Knowing that Abruzzi would almost definitely kill him, Bagwell binds himself to Schofield and eats the key. They leave the vehicle behind and proceed on foot. 
Schofield forced Apolskis to leave the squad due to his disloyalty. They enter a warehouse where Abruzzi amputates Bagwell's left hand, allowing Schofield to escape. They leave Bagwell behind and rush to the airfield. Meanwhile, the president dies of a heart attack, implying an assassination. Reynolds promptly swears in as president, earning the company's esteem. Tancredi's residence is searched by police who discover that she has overdosed. Donovan visits a house in Montana and meets Stedman. Apolskis goes through the checkpoint in an animal transport van. Potoshik takes a bicycle. Bagwell keeps sprinting with his hand. The squad arrives at the strip just as the jet departs. As the cops approach, they flee. We run. End of prison break. Season 1.